Be ready to change yourself. Be ready to challenge your better self. Know that your mind can develop a passionate winning spirit. Mm. But not by yourself. We guarantee your family in love with your life. And you're gonna love all the grind. Lewis and Barish together we develop your mindset with vitamin C for your mind. Yeah. Don't you settle with what you know. There's much to learn. There's much to earn. Tell yourself I'm ready. I'm ready to fight. Ready to be heard. Out of success and awakening rise. There's so many words that turn into prices. Be ready to change. Change for the best. Step up and be great. Don't be like the rest uh, Develop your mindset Okay Here we go Number 75 guys We're um, getting there 25. We're like 3 quarter way to 100 <laughs> um, This is Develop Your Mindset Podcast We're back Saturday as usual We have really really good interesting topic this week Because of As you guys know we um, go through a lot of adversities at the company, jewelry company, Kabarzi, and um, so we take all the interesting things that had happened and we um, build a podcast around that. So this week, uh, before that, Luis is back with us always, always. Yeah, I man, <laughs> I'm always here, man, in the podcast. Yeah, so welcome back everybody to another episode of the podcast. As always, you know, we're always looking to, um, you know, bring value to you guys through every episode. And this episode will be no different from that. And yeah, I mean, we can go ahead and get started. Yay, let's do that. <coughs> so we're going to start. Um, so th this week, uh, I thought about it really, really uh, deeply. And I came up with these words because this was the most interesting and most happened this week, which is how to find out how smart you are well you know it's a, a heavy uh, question and uh, some of us we try to avoid this question and uh, we think we're smart or smart enough to do it and when you fail or, or don't succeed then you start asking yourself what the heck is going on and um, so this this week we're going to be uh, uh, talking about this a little bit, coming up with uh, different scenarios if uh, and ask ourselves in different ways how smart we are, or at least we think we are individually. And uh, we're going to go ahead and do that. And I think I'm going to leave that over there. You can explain <laughs> that how. <laughs> yeah, so how to find out how smart you are. I think you made a good point as far as like, you know, really analyzing and embracing all the failures that you, that you experience because I think it's only through that through which you can discover, you know, how smart you are because you have to be implementing pretty much all the knowledge that you acquire, you know, whether that's through, you know, experience, that's through books, through courses, through instructors, um, whatever, you know, your preferred method of learning is. Uh, you're gonna take some knowledge out of that and you know the only way to really know if you've really mastered what you you know what you heard what you paid attention to uh, is to really go out there and actually implement it into the real world and see how how you actually perform and how good is it what you learn how practical it is and how well you perform and you know at that point you'll start to realize you know how how, how was your learning you know that you really learn everything or you know, is this a good source material to learn from? Or, you know, perhaps it was your fault. Maybe you didn't, um, you weren't able to really, you know, integrate that information properly when you were learning it. Perhaps you were distracted or you just didn't pay attention properly. And so you missed out on a lot of, uh, a lot of information. And now that you're actually performing, perhaps you didn't remember it. So you made some mistakes here and there. So, um, I think only through, um, to really you know implementing the information and what you know is where you know you can really find out how how smart you are awesome yeah man growing up i always heard this uh, this saying or this word uh, uh which is um life is a a school that's what i heard a lot obviously um it is a school um and we do a lot, we try a lot, we do a lot, of, we, we go through a lot of tests. And sometimes we, most of the time we fail actually. 
sometimes we succeed before failing and that's 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 got to be something you have learned previously or something and that's where um, you um, well the thing is uh, I, I think like because life is a school that's you got to take it like uh, you know uh, learning experience and every, each time you do it right then you know you're gonna you're gonna gauge yourself how smart you are and how smart you're getting eventually you're gonna learn more and more and more and then uh, uh, unfortunately you're gonna get older and older and older with the learning and the learning more and more and then one day you're gonna be too old to even implement what you learn so yeah. there is a there's a fine line where you should come very smart uh, and you still have your eyes and e ears working your body's working your neck is so let's talk about a few things and let's talk about are you reading listening learning and observing so all these uh, criteria are um, how smart you are and kind of like gauging how smart you are and and knowing like if you are succeeding more or you're failing more which is more you kind of start gauging yourself but you're gonna need some tools obviously one of the tools is, is like reading or if you're not good reader at least start listening to books and listen to books that matters like you know like if in your in your industry whatever you're doing obviously you want to learn more and more and more and more in that and then so you can do a little bit more a little bit more become more successful and also listening is part of like you know you uh, ask question and then you open your ear you don't just ask and ask and like, you know mm -hmm. and uh, never never you have to develop that skill to listen to you know it's a skill and uh, learning is also uh, a, a I don't know what to say like what is learning it's a it's got to it, it's a <laughs> it's something that you learn that that you need to learn like you know it people don't know like and, uh, when I was little much more like when I was younger very young I didn't know that I have to learn shit you know and uh, once I figured it out I was like okay I start making plans I want to become jeweler and start asking around and then I found out that it takes more than five years to become a jeweler I'm like okay so I have to commit five years and then well, how am I gonna commit I was doing like calculations you know uh, what's the best way for me to learn jewelry oh you know how about I go learn from the master and uh, I found out that the master doesn't want to pay you a lot of money I was like okay uh, it's, it's fine I want to be become a jeweler so I learned that that's the that's the step to do it and I actually was uh, from beginning before I even started I was okay with with not getting paid a lot and putting a lot of years to become a jeweler so you have to learn what it you know that that the, the this is the way that what, whatever you're gonna do you're gonna find out and you're gonna learn how that thing works for like attaining uh, um, whatever job or or like if you're gonna get married you probably need to learn how you know what it, what it takes to and uh, all kinds of stuff and maybe you want to go to hiking maybe you want to go learn how to go hiking like camping what what kind of equipments you need what do you need to do what you are you need what kind of skills you need so so that's that you have to know that there's a learning and then there is a listening when you learn when you're going to learn something you have to open your ears and listen so that's something that i did a lot i remember hearing this word which is i use it all the time a hair this way, a hair that way, just a hair more filing. I was like, oh, you know, like this hair never gonna go away. It never did. <laughs> I, I use it today, always. Um, and observing, observing is also a form of uh, knowing that you're, uh, you know, you're how smart you are, how intelligent you are, because when you're observing, you're seeing others doing what you do, and then you're seeing how good they're doing. And you're gauging yourself through that experience like how good you are and then understanding that i need to learn some more or i'm better than most of so you know like you 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 gotta 
have uh, those kind of skills uh, to be able to listen, to learn, to, uh, to, to uh, reading and observing. So those are some skill sets you need to understand that you're going to need to gauge yourself how smart you are and how much more you need to do to become next step smart. So I don't think it ever ends. So Yeah. Yeah, um, I think it does end. And <laughs> okay, let's hear it. Let me explain though. Okay, so are you reading, learning, listening, and observing, right? So um, let's go ahead and uh, let me talk about these individually. So first of all, you know, reading. Uh, reading in and of itself, um, you know, it's something that I guess uh, that, that's uh, the one thing that not a lot of people do. And it could be for multiple reasons. Maybe you're just not... You just don't enjoy the 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 activity of you know flipping through pages. Perhaps you're a slow reader, so you know you're dreading the the act of reading just because you know it's gonna take you like forever to finish one book, or you know there's just not enough stimulation coming off of the book too because it is it is a very um it's an activity that that's very um it's not very stimulating you're just there you're sitting most likely you're going to be sitting in alone in some you know area where you know you're just uh there's nothing going on around and you're pretty much just going to focus into the book and so yeah but uh definitely there's a lot of advantages to actually reading a book but it does require you know you do sort of have to learn you know specific things as to how you can read a book properly uh things like you know eliminating distractions eliminating uh things around you that may be more stimulating you know like perhaps having your phone around that that can be quite of a problem because if you're trying to focus on the book and then you start getting notifications on your phone well you know it kind of becomes a little bit easier to just go on your phone and start like reading your notifications start swiping and then yeah, no. you know you kind of forget about the book and so yeah another one is like focus but my favorite one of all is actually reading a book with an intention and a purpose you know so perhaps you know you're having difficulty i don't know um you read a book because um you want to be more positive or something right so you're struggling maybe you're just constantly thinking negative and you want to change that so you go and you pick up a book that talks about how to think more positive and so you know maybe your goal with this book is to learn you know maybe you want to learn affirmations from that book so you go and you read that book and you try to find you know okay what kind of things can i tell myself that are more positive so i can have more positive thoughts and so pretty much at that point once you extract that value from that book you put that book aside and you can pretty much uh but you always get it with a with a purpose with an intention always have like a reason to to read don't just go in there and read and just uh like randomly not really knowing what you can expect from the book but have a purpose be like i'm gonna read this book i'm gonna invest my time my energy i'm gonna put stuff aside because i want i want to get some value from that book now of course uh learning learning of course too like you gotta have a purpose to learn stuff and yes there is a process to also you know to learning uh, that can make learning a whole lot easier, you know, like uh, things like, like I said previously, having a purpose, you're learning because maybe you want to make more money, you want to increase your skill set. Uh, I don't know, whatever it is that you're learning, you got to have a purpose, there's got to be a reason and there's got to be a personal reason why you're doing it. And of course, you know, there's things that you can do to amplify your learning. So, you know, learn what's your preferred learning method there's different ways you can learn through courses through youtube through books through audiobooks through stories you know, yeah stories too uh there's many ways to learn you just got to find the one that really connects with you that resonates with you and start there and little by little start to see start to expand that that um those processes because i know for me like my preferred uh, way of learning is is through video and so that's really where I started learning the most was watching, you know, videos on YouTube. But then, you know, little by little, I started to expand onto things that I normally wouldn't, you know, like things like audiobooks and reading physical books and listening to podcasts and stuff like that. You know, those those are other alternatives. But, um, you know, once you're able to learn from all these other other sources, you know, you just increase, you know, the, um, your ability to learn as opposed to just being restrained to one, but it's, it's always good to find your preferred one. That way, you know, you can get the ball rolling and then you, you just, you know, increase that from then on. So 
that's that's good listening of course like you said audiobooks are a great way you can also do podcasts you can also do um um uh, what else is there, man? There's oh, like like in colleges, they have a lot of uh, whatever speakers and people go sit down and listen and get. Yeah, that too. Yeah, so there's a lot of uh, a lot of things uh, listening. You can listen to stories as well. Uh, there's a lot of ways that you can learn through listening, and so listening, you know, it's it's quite of a quite of a thing. But yeah, like you said too, uh, it, it is a skill that you really have to uh, develop and. And learn and be able to you know incorporate in every single aspect of your life because it will be helpful as far as like learning knowledge but also you know listening to you know the people around you and it also helps with like creating new relationships and making some of your relationships even more stronger you know when you're able to listen more than you actually speak because you know through it's through listening that you know bonding really happens between people because if you're like the old, the one always talking and talking um you sort of block the other person from actually opening up and you know actually having them share their own thoughts and what they you know how they see the world and so that's not going to create a very strong relationship there because it's very one-sided one person is doing all the talking and so yeah so listening is extremely you know uh, important and lastly I mean observing observing is obviously you know there's a lot of things to see everything from like you know the obvious things and of course there's the subtleties as well and yeah observing can can teach you a lot but then, then again that's an, another skill too that you that you have to sort of develop and you know of course there's books and everything that can help you uh, learn how to observe certain things and look for certain things but always you got to have a purpose for for it and yeah all right so i'm very still uh curious about uh when i said uh, it never ends mm -hmm. you said it ends so it, yeah i'm still waiting for that <laughs> <laughs> explanation yeah so the the reason why i think that um it, it ends at some point is because like i said like you have a um you always do it with a purpose so maybe you're learning because uh, uh i decide to go and learn i don't know i mean um like i say like the positive thoughts or something like that um maybe that's not a good example but uh, <laughs> uh let's just say you're trying to you know be more positive and so you go you pick up a a, f a few books here and there or you watch a few videos but once you've already adopted the the good and positive thoughts um, and you found like a really good system that works for you and that, you know, you're able to really manage your thoughts properly and everything. Um, at some point, you know, you got to create space for other things that you might be interested in learning as well. So that's kind of my, what I was trying to say there. I mean, maybe not, obviously, you know, not stopping completely, like, like completely stop learning, <laughs> you know, but I would say like, there's, you know, everything has like its purpose. Maybe you learn how to do this because you want to do this. But once you accomplish that, uh, it pretty much like you're done there and you pretty much move on to whatever next thing that you want to learn and stuff like that. So. Very nice. Bravo. We, I, now I understand. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was good. Man. Let's do the next, which is control your emotions, your anger and personality. So this is all um, deep, uh stuff that we don't think about all the time especially when we're doing our daily chores because we're a lot of, a lot of times subconsciously we're doing a lot, of, a lot of things that we normally do making sandwich taking shower uh getting ready driving the car and uh, talking to somebody with kind of like saying good like good morning how are you like all this uh, obvious words that we use and like, mm -hmm. if, if you're not having conversation deep conversation it's not you're not going to get to this kind of emotional uh, place or um, you know anger is uh, uh, or, or the opposite of anger too you know it's again you know it's an emotion based uh, feeling and uh, so so how you gauge uh, how smart you are is like a lot of the times you avoid okay this is how i started doing not long ago 
a lot of the times I avoid doing something that I know it's going to cause more uh, harm to the relationship or to the business or to whatever you're uh, seeking and you care about. Um, obviously, when you're selling something, you're going to agree with your customer all the time, always. If you disagree, you just lost that sale. Okay, so in life, everything is sale. You're selling yourself, you're selling your idea, you're selling uh, uh, the place that you want to go to, you're trying to tell your spouse, your friend, why they should go with you to that place that you want to go to. So there's that, uh, that idea when you're when you be you when you when you understand how to um, uh, elaborate yourself and then you uh, slowly pull to your side in a nice way not in uh, what is the word like not in manipulation way right so that's that's you that's when you're becoming smart in doing things in a smart way you know not a dumb way so um, when you control your anger, you don't get angry, but you can still uh, able to uh, elaborate yourself again. You know, like the words that you choose, the, 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 the facial movement, everything. That when you become smarter, you become uh, um, knowingly doing these things. And then, I like like until we start doing this podcast, I didn't know my facial movements, my, my sound, how, we, how I sound in a certain, uh, uh, when I'm thinking certain way and everything. But I, uh, you know, I, but I learned myself by watching myself on YouTube. And um, so I recommend you guys maybe, s I mean, record yourself and, um, and then sit and watch yourself and then see how do you, when you think certain way, how do you look? Like how, how, how you deliver the words, the, the thoughts that you have, and that's how you, you start uh, refining yourself and then you're becoming smarter because you're doing better now, you know, you're not stuck in uh, one di dimension, you become multidimensional because now when, when I speak, I know how I sound, I know how I look, I know my facial movement, how I, uh, how I look, and then that's why I became smarter. And then I, I, I do certain things with knowingly now because, you know, that's what I want to uh, portray it out there, like how I want it to look like. So um, you have to control your emotions, your anger or your disappointments or your, um, you know, your whatever emotional stuff that we go through. Uh, you have to control it. You have to know, learn how to. And, uh, and personality, you have to develop personality. Of course, we all do. Uh, in, when we're, we're younger, we're like uh, looking to some actor, singer, some influencer, and we're trying to adapt that kind of personality. But when you get older, that becomes uh, weak and doesn't work anymore. You have to develop who you are. You have to develop that personality, the best version of yourself. And that version never ends because older you get more you know more you learn you want to become better so you're gauging yourself how how smart you are today and then when you get a little older looking back you're like shit what was i doing what was i thinking you know yeah and so those are some like stuff that as a human we go through and then with learning and process and everything so life is a process enjoy it have have amazing time with it um I hear this sometimes, I hear when people are 19 years old, they're wishing to be 21. When people are uh, 75, they're wishing they were 19. You know, it's all <laughs> like crazy yeah. like that as a human. But you know what? Enjoy the hell out of your 19 years old. And if you're 75, enjoy the 75, the hell out of that 75. Because we're going to get only one time 19, one time 75, one time whatever age you are, the day you are. And then that day is the most important day come become smart about that and then just you know let's just f freaking like fucking like have amazing day minute life and you know that's what uh to me that's what smart is um and yeah that's how i see it man <laughs>
All right. I'm going to take it in a, in a different direction here. Let's do it. <laughs> I love it. So instead of, um, you know, I know we're saying here about controlling your emotions, your anger, and, and your personality here. I'm going to tell you guys right here to actually use your emotions and use that anger and personality to actually become even smarter. So what I'm trying to say here is that, you know, sometimes you, well, it's not sometimes. I mean, this is this is a fact. I mean, you go through life and you confront struggles, you confront some sort of pain, you know, in whatever area it is in your life, you know, and th these pains may be different for everybody because, you know, it all depends on what you value and where where it is that you want to actually succeed, you know, because it, it, we don't all want to. We don't want to succeed at everything. We want to succeed at the things that we actually love and we have a passion for. So those things are, are actually the ones that matter to us. You know, there's things that we are just not good at, but we don't have no interest. So we don't care because uh, we're not interested in becoming really good at, at doing certain things. But the things that we are, we're, we're really interested. And so here's the thing, like, you know, when you face something like that, maybe you... Like, uh, I'll give an example of, of myself, you know, uh, a story, you know, uh, many of you guys probably don't know. And um, when I was like really young, I was probably in elementary school. I was really bad with technology. Like I was really bad with, with computers. And like I was I was actually that kid that the, the, the computer instructor would come to me and like he would like he would be like really mean to me like because I, I would make like little mistakes on the computer that would make the computer like not function properly <laughs> like I, I would like I, I don't remember what I was doing but he, he would just like get really mad at me and like and like tell me like why don't you do it this way why don't you do it that way what this this that right <laughs> and like that that hurt me you know I felt hurt I felt bad you know I got angry my emotions were like all over the place and I was like you know, I was, I was frustrated, but you know what? Instead of actually, you know, diving into that frustration and feeling depressed and feeling angry and just be, I actually use that emotion and be like, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to look into this. I'm actually going to, you know, look into, you know, at that, at that time it was using the computer. And I was like, I'm going to look into it. And I'm going to become really good at this computer to the degree that I'm going to become, I'm, I'm going to become even better than the instructors themselves. And eventually that became a reality a few years later, but that, that's what I did. And I used that, um, I used those emotions as leverage, you know, to really propel me to go out there and actually learn more and study more and, you know, put in the work and the hours. And that's pretty much what I want to tell you guys here. Like if, if right now you're facing a struggle, you know, and it really matters to you, like you really like you're hurt by it, that may be a sign that, Hey, you know what? You got to skill up. You got to learn more. You got to develop yeah. yourself more so that, <laughs> so that they don't, um, they don't like uh, do things to you like this so you're not you don't have to face that pain and so I guess not a lot of people look into that pain that way you know a lot of people you know they face the pain and they're like oh my god that's why we're here together man and so I went through something <laughs> like that you know the story of the glasses you know yeah. like that, that person told me like you don't need to go to school you're you're dumb you're not smart kid you mm -hmm. just go and that fucking hurt me like you know and then i went into jewelry uh, industry and i wanted to become the best jeweler and fucking like make his uh, eyeglasses with in gold yeah. right and then eventually i became so good and i learned how to make handmade eyeglasses and then they were you know <laughs> and i made bunch and i and i felt that that feeling where i'm like okay i did it you know like i have the i made the glasses yeah. that i promised myself when i was 14 years old you yeah. know and I, when i made it i was in my 40 46 ish yeah. you know and yeah i i totally understand how to use that if and the age doesn't matter whenever that happens you're gonna take it in a really positive way and then really push yourself yeah. and don't put any time like you don't know when you're gonna be able to accomplish that yeah. but it's a it's a mindset that you develop yeah and i and you know i think uh, using your emotions is even a a really good idea because that's really like the your source of motivation you know that's where it comes from because you know when you have uh so that that type of pain you know you, you can that's a very strong emotion so you can really use that to 
you know, go and actually, you know, study, put in the work, train yourself, and you have that motivation. You always have that pain present there. It's always there. If you don't have that pain, it's it's a little bit harder for you to actually go and put in the hours or or anything because there is no like, there's no pressure. There's nothing like you can't prove yourself. You can't prove anybody. It's like there's no there's no pain. But when there is pain, you know, you want to actually not only relieve the pain but also you know be own that and actually um surpass that and there's like a really good feeling of being able to really overcome that that pain by you know you becoming better and so um, you life know life becomes meaningful right? <laughs> that point and you're so like i'm gonna do this i'm gonna show him you know like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And but so the thing is you have to show yourself you don't have to show it to anybody but you can use that mm -hmm. That's a big huge motivation yeah. and, and yeah awesome. man and throughout the years yeah i was able to really um with the computer wise i was able to actually surpass uh some of my instructors along the way and awesome. and do things that they told me were impossible and it came to a point when i was in i was in college where like the, the the network of the of the school was like going a little like crazy and, and the instructor had, had gave me an account because i was like helping him out like with the whole like uh infrastructure like the networking of the entire college oh. and like when, when there was like something going on the, the the instructor actually thought it was me like he thought, <laughs> like I, I was i didn't cause anything but like that's how like smart he thought i was to the degree that i would I would cause some sort of like you know damage within the infrastructure and that at that point you know like when people fear you for for you know for your skill set you know that you're good at that point you know you're like <laughs> well you know like it's it's how how do you measure someone how good he is or she is obviously if somebody comes does a little bit better than you then, then you, <laughs> a, a guy is better than you that's, that's it you know and just a little bit is enough to to you know to I see that person I, I like to think of it like the athletes you know like the really good ones you know yeah. those those like they were like athletes to be scared of like you didn't want to go against them because you knew they were <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna uh, uh, hold you <laughs> hold, hold your ass in your hand yeah uh, something like that um yeah for sure um those two uh, different uh, way of explaining uh, the uh, uh, control your anger and your you know your emotions is amazing. Like um, both ways work if you know how to like deal uh, with yourself in in like you know like how you want to see this. Even like to see something in both ways, negative and positive, yeah. and uh, white and black is even more amazing. So this is what you just got, uh, uh, you guys got here, and uh, that was really good. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think let's move to the next, which is how much more do you know from previous years or like we were talking, like from your teacher, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that uh, he thought you were, you were helping him. But uh, next thing is like his, his fear, fearful, fearful yeah. of your uh, <laughs> skill set. <laughs> and, and he shouldn't be because, you know, like, is he insecure or... <laughs> or does he he doesn't want his um his 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 um i don't know like the classroom or his his uh whatever he's doing to be better because that's how i see this this yeah. freaking thing you know i want yeah. the company to do so much better i want my people to be so much like smarter than me i want to learn from them you know I don't want to be the person teaching them like what the hell like so that's it the, the smartness stops with me that's not how it goes you know <laughs> not for me so um and I, you know when you guys when you guys are forming some kind of group some kind of uh, um, company uh, some sort of company you know uh, you you want to find some people that they're smarter than you and you have to trust them you have to leave them alone you have to give them the the space and the floor let them go you know um, if things go not so good then you can always come back and sit down and you'll be like you know what we did all this and we didn't see anything but if if the success so success is going to come from failures and then you fail 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 and then you hit that that nerve where uh, you know that's where the success is and 
how do you know what success is? You don't. You just do it. And then when you hit, you're going to know uh, from the results. And uh, if there's result, you know, then, then you continue. If the, it dies, then you don't. You just start looking for other uh, ways to find result again. So, uh, you know, like uh, previously, whatever you did, it matters and it doesn't matter. So um, depending where you are in that time, whatever you're doing, uh, looking for results. Um, previously, you had some success. It doesn't, uh, it's not there anymore. Um, I'm going to say a small story. I read, we read this book, me and my brother, long, 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 long time ago. I don't remember the name, but in, in the book, the, there was a story. Two rats found this big cheese and they're eating. So, so they eat the cheese, the cheese is finished. And one of the rat goes, I'm going to go look for different another cheese. And that person go, that rat goes to look for another cheese. And then this rat stays there because that's where they found the big cheese. And, you know, he thinks there's going to be another cheese over there. And then in the story, the, the, the one rat that left, he finds another place. He finds another cheese and starts eating there. And then this guy, this rat here, still waiting for it. <laughs> so, so moral of the story is... If something's not working, you gotta take off. You gotta go. You gotta look for somewhere else. Most likely, the the, the money had shifted. The economy has shifted. The, the technology has shifted. It's not that software anymore. It's not that place where you make money anymore. It's not that color anymore. So basically, um, you have to be uh, result oriented. If there's no result, you gotta you gotta go. You gotta go find other place. The result. So. Um, whatever you're doing, so I think that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very important that you um, that you don't get stuck and stifled in yeah. in one particular area. I mean, um, one thing that I do, like you know, to really, you know, because uh, I've done this for the past couple of years, maybe uh, four or five years. Um, I'm always like checking and seeing, like, oh, what it, what's the well, well, what's the new thing that I've learned, you know, throughout this year? And like every year, I strive to learn like more things, and you know, it's always from like different areas and different, you know, things here and there. But uh, you know, the and I've been working at it, and I th I'm pretty sure like next year this is going to be even better. But uh, you know, as far as like how I manage that is that I'm always trying to see like what kind of um and this is something that i learned as i was in in technology and everything which is uh looking for you know a problem to solve really and looking for problems to solve within your passions within the things that you that you love to do try to find problems you know and try to find things that you can actually go there and, and fix yourself and see how well you do and because like i said previously in the previous point which is emotion you know so when you see a problem you know like that's how you create an emotion there's a problem there's something that i don't like and so you know you you have the passion and of course you have the hopefully you have the ambition um <laughs> to go and actually study and scroll up for it uh when you solve a problem First of all, you know, it does two things. One, you know, you fix the problem. Maybe the problem wasn't yours. Maybe you're proactively looking for problems. Maybe you want to help this person. You want to help that person. And so you go and you say, hey, I see you have a problem there. Let me fix it for you. You go and you fix it. And, you know, first thing is you help that person. So you'll feel good about helping that person. And also, you know, you'll feel good because, you know, you learned something along the way while you were learning how to fix that one thing as well and so um, that's uh that's the double benefit there but uh yeah i mean and the more you're able to do this throughout your year you know the more you're going to be able to learn and learn and learn and so um, the thing is that a lot of people like to pretty much stay li like you say all the time you know in that in that comfort zone where yeah. they're comfortable and so um, they don't want to look for problems they actually want to avoid them and so the, and, and I get where it's coming from, but at the same time, if you continue to always avoid the problems, you're, you're never going to learn. You're pretty much like you're you're killing your journey to learn because if there's you, you're not you're not looking for any problems, you're not looking for anything to solve. Actually, you have to look for problems. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, you know? that's what I'm saying. How, how are you going to do it? I mean, yeah. how, how else you get, you're going to learn? Like. If you avoid problems, man, like you have to look for a problem. The problem is the source to become better, you know, to become smarter. 
No, believe it or not, there's people who learn and they try to seek knowledge not for solving a problem. It's more for egoistic reasons. It's more to like, you know, when they're having a conversation with someone, they want to sound like a smart person. So they have all these facts in their head and they have all this knowledge. And so they're speaking as though they, they know what they're talking about. But uh, it's very easy to go and pick up a book and really retain a lot of information and then go to somebody else and be like, hey, uh, I know how to do this, this, that, you know, it works this way and that way, you know. And so, but you don't really know that that works because you never actually tried it. You know, it's just your, it's just your ego. You're trying to, you're trying to feel like you're, like you're a smart person. And, but, and so these, these are like, like fake smart people because they're not really, they're just retaining information in their memory and they're not actually like, they haven't implemented, they have no experience to back up what they're, what they're saying. And so it's important that you actually implement what you're learning. And the only way to do that is to solve a problem. The other day I was listening to something, this, this, this man said something very wise because uh, since we're talking about uh, to, to know how smart you are, basically if you want to explain something to somebody, he said, you probably want to know 10 and, and be able to explain it with one. And then when, when the question comes, you have nine behind it to be able to articulate yourself and explain in the right way. Mm -hmm. That's when you sound smart. If you just know as much as you're explaining and then you can't explain further, then you're not going to sound smart. So that's, that's mm -hmm. a very profound way of looking at it and knowing. So yeah, that's a, a few, few things know about s stuff yeah. that's going to help you and, and believe that that's true, you know, that's going to help you to really put the time and effort to learn about this freaking cup. And then when you say it's a cup, then now you have to be able to under, to, uh, to explain the material, the color, how it comes together, how mm -hmm. to make it when, when it's like uh, morning time, you can, how it works, it mm -hmm. blah, blah, everything. So, um, yeah, you have to really, really know about stuff deep, a lot, 10, 10 deep uh, levels. And then you probably want to open your mouth and talk about that because you don't want to, if you don't want to sound. You're not very, you're not smart. So. Of course, yeah. yeah. Um, next is when to know how to say no and yes. This is something uh, I was uh, writing all these questions. This came up and <laughs> here our beautiful uh, Rita <laughs> said uh, we should talk about this because something happened this week that uh, she's... Uh, yeah, she wanted us to talk about it. So I'm going to try to elaborate here as much as I can here. Like, so basically I put the no first before yes. The reason is like, it goes like this. When, <laughs> when to know how to say no and then yes. So at first you probably want to say, no, I don't want to do it. Or I don't know, or I going to try and whatever, you know, like you don't want to say yes and go for it and then find out that you're wrong. So, or something that you're losing, not gaining, and then blah, blah. So, so you have to uh, not volunteer in the beginning. Uh, that's probably the smart thing to do, <laughs> since we're talking about smart, how smart you are. Uh, you probably want to say no first, and let me find out about it, and i let you know later. Then uh, volunteer and just say, like, oh, it's nothing, I'll do it, and then find out that you're not sitting on the right chair so um, <laughs> i think that's i'm gonna leave there <laughs> let, let me see how you're gonna explain this you're gonna keep on since, explaining since, here, here. I know, since you were the outsider you heard keep this on explaining <laughs> man uh when to know how to say no and and when to know how to say yes so i mean um I mean, I've had those, uh, I mean, I still have them, but not as much as I did before, actually, because, oh, before I would, I would definitely say maybe like throughout the whole year, maybe it was like a 90% yes and 10% no. And so, you know, life was, it, it, it wasn't like, it wasn't like really bad, bad, but it was, it was not great either. It was, and then it was until like, you know, it, it was kind of last year that I started to realize like how this was actually affecting my life just because I was saying yes so many times. I was... Oh, yeah. I was uh, trying to please and be nice to people and like, yeah, it was just not, 
it, it, it wasn't fulfilling me like sure may, maybe i got like a good response i got a good feedback in return i got the the positive cues and you know stuff like that you get the smiles you get like uh the compliments and stuff like that you know because you say yes and so everything's nice and cool and everything there's no tension but then I realized that, you know, that comes at a cost. And the cost is that you yourself, you don't feel good, you know, because there's some areas where you would want to say no because they're just not aligned with, you know, who you are, your values, your purpose in life and stuff like that. And so it, well, what I did is that, you know, I started to get very clear on those things and I still am. I'm still working on this. I'm not saying that I'm perfect or anything, but it's important that you get awareness. Man. Yeah, it's important that you get like things like your standards, your purpose and your values in check as far as like what they are for you, because and one more thing, admitting that you were wrong <laughs> or you didn't understand. Admit. Oh, yeah, that too. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> and but but then uh, we go back to, you know, what we were saying first, you know, is that pain. So because I was saying yes so many times, that was producing pain. You know, may maybe I, I mean, obviously I didn't express this pain out and be like, oh, you know, I'm dying. <laughs> but uh, but I did feel the pain. And so you feel the pain for saying yes. Sometimes, you know, you get hurt, whether, you know, you you lose somebody in your life because of it or you st because, you know, you said yes to this. Now, you because by saying yes to something, you're saying no to something else. You're always doing that. And so maybe by saying yes to this person, you're saying no to this other person. And so, you know, this person is taking the no. And so perhaps, you know, maybe this person was actually more valuable and they're getting the no's all the time where eventually they're just going to take off. They're going to be like, you know what? This person doesn't care about me. They're always saying no to me. And so, yeah. And and then you feel bad you feel the pain and you know stuff like well, that well you know i put the no first not 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 saying that don't say yes at all you know but you have to gauge yourself if it's possible or something yeah, yeah of course uh, i was to get uh, to yes. i was gonna get to that but uh yeah. but yeah so you get <laughs> so um so yeah so you see the pains that it produces you know to continuously say yes you know or perhaps you know you you're gonna lose something whether that's person that's a person maybe it's a materialistic thing maybe it's money maybe it's uh whatever it is and so that's gonna produce some sort of pain and hopefully that that triggers you or, or you can use it intentionally to stop saying uh yes to everything and start being more selective as far as like what you say yes to and of course this is going to come down to really what do you want what do you want out of life what do you want out of uh certain people what do you want to put out there and so um, you know based on that that's where you know you're going to say yes you're going to say no and you know i've realized that now that i've you know ever since i started to you know say no more times you know some of those uh those positive things started to sort of start going away you know people are not responding very well now Every, you know sometimes i say no here i don't want to go there i don't want to do this uh, that the, the responses are not they're not as nice as they used to be you know when i was saying yeah yeah yes yes of course yes you know <laughs> like i agree you know there's that you know <laughs> now that i'm like i disagree or i say something like that the responses are not that nice anymore there's not it's not all like nice anymore now it's like there's tension now there's uh it's a little bit of fear as well because uh just like oh like what's gonna happen you know if i say no you know like things like that you know and but you have to do it because you have to do it for yourself really you have to do it for you know to maintain your own identity and maintain whatever it is that you value your standards your purpose you want to protect those things because those are what make you you know those are what make your identity what make you unique and you want to protect that if you start saying yes to everybody then you're, you're going to start to lose that because you know you just uh there is really no like well when are you going to say no you know so yeah well definitely that's going to help you to find out how smart you are um the next <laughs> one is are you willing to expose your flaws? Uh, <laughs> are you? Like, because I am. I already <laughs> decided a long time ago, about five years, six years ago, to expose my flaws and to learn what I'm not good at. And then to, like, uh, really, really push myself into have an idea, understanding of about that, what I'm not so good at. And then 
probably you know push myself so much to the the the, the parts where I'm really good at and then with, with that you know start a company start uh, something and you know uh, and and either hire people or bring people or get help to like cover your weak points and that's how you become smart smarter smarter because um, now you're doing better in life because your weak points are becoming much much better much stronger and that uh, whatever you're doing it's gonna it's gonna become much more refined much more better and if that was a worse much more better, <laughs> but much better and uh, yeah seriously like uh, you have to expose your f uh, your uh, flaws and uh, don't worry about uh, crit criticism because that's going to help you to become even better because you know criticizing is not easy to to listen to but you know when you go back home when you go into the, your bed before you fall asleep and you're thinking about what happened that day and you know that's that's uh, you're gonna eventually have to come to terms with with your uh, with your what is the word like uh, inequity what is the word like you're not good at <laughs> your deficiency your deficiency whatever no um, yeah something like that inequity something so this is the thing here inabilities like, Inabilities also like <laughs> this it starts with you it ends with you you have to come into terms with yourself and then uh, be okay with your flaws and then slowly work on them get a little better you're probably never gonna be as good as your you know your skill set that you are you you have you 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 either you know like you're you're smart in book and numbers or maybe like in uh, you know like I'm a jeweler and like I became a really good jeweler because I spent 30 over 30 years of doing it and really like 30 times uh, not not 30 times doing the same thing but like 30 different years of learning different things so I I look smart because I didn't confine myself into one kind of thing. So I was never okay with my comfort zone. I was always pushing out of, out of comfort zone. And that's what I took for me to become better jeweler. And if you're not doing that, just just do it because that's, that's, that's how you're gonna become better. And yeah, uh, uh, definitely be okay with your flaws because this is another area where you can really start becoming better and learning and becoming smarter uh, every day. Yeah, so are you willing to explode, expose your flaws? So, um, yeah, I mean, exposing your flaws, I think, uh, um, first of all, I mean, uh, I think it's it's a good idea to expose your flaws with maybe uh, if you're like a business owner, maybe with your like employees and the people you work with. Uh, and of course, you know, if you're just a... Uh, uh, you're not a business owner then maybe um, just with your everyday people right your friends your family and stuff like that right uh, because it really helps to create that uh, again you can you can bond with people uh, a little bit better because you know you're showing that you're a human being and that you're you're human you have flaws you you're not good at everything and uh, and yeah However, I think uh, when it comes to like business and stuff and, you know, your brand, I think uh, that may not be a good place to expose them because you are competing. You are going against other other businesses. And I think uh, at that point, you want to be putting out, you know, the best the best part of yourself out there and claim that you're the best and that you are the right person to go to when you know that specific thing is needed you know as far as whatever your business is and you know people should have massive confidence in you that you're gonna get the job done and so um, they want to know that you're somebody who they can trust and you know that they can trust with their money and you know they can trust that you're gonna actually give them what what they expect from you as a business and so I think in that concept and that in that sort of area I think it's it's it, it might not be a good idea I guess it depends on the industry but uh, uh, 
just because, like I said, you're going against competition and they may, there may be another business who's trying to, you know, take over yours. And so if you're putting out your flaws and letting out people what your weaknesses are and your things, well, you better bet they're going to try to uh, uh, hit on those and, you know, pretty much uh, put you out of business. And, and so, yeah, and, and there's countless examples of that mm -hmm. out there where, you know, they just got taken down. And so... And so, yeah, but as far as like, you know, working on them, I think it's a, it's a great idea. I think it's, it's a good idea that you recognize what they are and be very uh, accepting of it, embrace those flaws and know what they are and be okay with them because, you know, the fact that those exist, you know, that means that you're pretty much, you're better at other things. You know, there's other parts about you that are really great and so you you got to focus on those and of course your flaws well uh some of them may just not you may not be able to do too much about them so in that case um you know do whatever it is that you can to work on them but don't focus on them too much as well because you're not trying to become like the perfect human being here you know you're just trying to work on those flaws enough to like maybe uh Maybe, uh, you know, your weaknesses can compromise your, your strengths. So you just don't want to, uh, you don't want that to happen. So you want to get your, your weaknesses to a point where they're decent and, but always focus on your strengths because that's where you're going to be able to, you know, provide the most value and be, um, you know, that's where you really are going to get smarter at, you know, because that's where your, your strengths are. That's where your passion is. That's where you enjoy doing. Or you're going to look smarter. Yeah, that too. <laughs> Hi. We're not. You guys, you can sit there, but you can't make any noise. So I don't know. You want? Okay. Let's continue. Let's do it. Um, that that is very true. Um, the thing is, uh, <laughs> when you like, when you're trying to do something that you are good at, but you're not having any success, but your your friends could be your competition. Maybe they're doing the same, uh, the same type of business, but you would never hear anything from them to tell you what you're doing wrong, or you know what, yeah. what, what do you need to do a little this to to make it work. But th that's how it works, you know. Yeah. Like it's a, you're on your own, buddy. You know, go, yeah, yeah. go figure out. <laughs> if you can't, you're screwed anyways. You know. <laughs> so that's that's pretty much that's a, when I was listening to you. I'm imagining like how it is. Um, next is. Oh, downtown Los Angeles alive. We're hearing sirens. Right? Yeah, we Usually can do. Usually it's pretty bad these days. How <laughs> much do you know and is, is it because of schooling or something else? Here we go. Like, how are you going to know that you're smart? Was it the school made you smart? Or was it because you put your time and learned some kind of skill? That's what makes you look smart. So I think both of them are uh, very... Uh, valuable and you know whichever you are uh, in your in that side uh, that is uh, your skill your 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 strength and uh, you have to um, uh, embrace that and then really like go after it being to become better um, uh, if, if you're like already uh, over uh, you lived over half of your life, you probably don't want to go back and start the other thing, you know, uh, because you don't have that much left. Of, uh, as we know, we don't have too much uh, on this planet. We have finite of good, good years that we can do some badass stuff, you know, and uh, some kick some ass. But other than that, uh, your ass is going to get kicked when you get older or when you're younger <laughs> so in between that you have a little bit of good years and whatever if, it, if it's a schooling you know then then you probably need to do that a little more you can do self-development you don't actually need to go schooling uh, self-development is as good uh, as important uh, like uh, like reading book is as important as if you finish the college or whatever university or um, having a skill set is uh, important to continue buying the latest tools and then learning how to operate them and then going to the next and next and next never stop that's how you become better and better you look smarter and smarter so 
I think that's pretty much how what I want to put out there. Uh, how you're gonna look smart, or you're gonna know if you're smart. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So um, schooling. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, I I personally don't reside on one side or another. I think it really de depends on you, like what you're trying to achieve, what you're trying to do with your life. Um, I think uh, school is great if. Um, you're pursuing something that requires a school, you know, like you need to go to college, university. Uh, there's certain uh, there's certain areas where you need to go there because um, that's pretty much the only way to really get access to that type of information. You get access to the instructors, you get access to connections over there. And so that may be something that you might be pursuing. So in that case, you know, that, that may be very beneficial to you. Or perhaps uh, that's not what you want to do. You don't want to pursue something as complex that requires for you to go to university. So in that case, you shouldn't go. It might be a big mistake if you do actually. And so I think it's important that you educate yourself and really, you know, see what is it that you want to do with your life and you know what kind of career you want to pursue because there's some careers where you don't really need to go to in college or in university you can still be very successful and you know especially if you're trying to start a business you really don't need to go you can you know you can pretty much learn those things on your own by getting books and courses and stuff like that and so and so yeah but um, I mean I I personally I did go to college and um, <laughs> that that's pretty much uh, I, I'm pretty grateful I did go though because uh, well I didn't really learn um, I, I didn't feel like it was I actually first of all I was kind of dreading it I was like ah, I didn't want to go you know because uh, my previous school years were like really like they were boring they were bad I didn't like the instructors I didn't like the topics I didn't like anything not even the people man like I had like <laughs> everyone that kind of didn't even like me there and it was just it, it was just bad experience but <laughs> but then I got to college and then I was actually studying something that I really liked which was like technology and stuff like that computers and and when I got to that, you know, I learned that I had actually actually had a passion for that. And what ended up happening is that, yes, I got I got like work and homework and stuff like that. But I, then I started to realize that because I had so much passion into it, it, it was very easy. Like I got like assignments that were very easy to complete. And eventually, you know, I started to learn even more. I started to read like pretty much like if they gave me a book, I would read the entire book before like the entire class did. And then I was like, okay, this book is really not enough. So then I would go, uh, I would actually go to the instructor themselves and actually start asking questions to the instructor. And so I would get even ahead, more ahead like that. But then the instructor themselves, uh, I was like, man, I, th I think like the instructor, I'm like they don't sound that smart either, man. Like what, what is this guy talking about, man? <laughs> So then I would go online and actually I started going on YouTube and that's when I started to learn from YouTube. So I was learning from like all these places and stuff like that. And so, I love it. And so that's where I kind of got the habit of really, you know, really learning by myself and not really needing somebody to push me because I had the passion. And that's when I realized like how important passion is, and how important it is to, to ha find something that you love to do because when you do, you don't really need somebody like pushing you constantly. You can do that on your own because you have that that motivation. And also it's important to have that. Like I said, you know, you have that 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 pain, that, that, that burning that, desire. Yeah, yeah that, that that pain. And so, you know, the, my 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 struggle there, the problem I was trying to solve there is that I actually wanted to help the people there because I would see like everybody around me would be struggling with the stuff they would learn. So I would be like, I'm going to become so good. I'm going to I'm going to be the one helping because these teachers weren't helping that well either like because I felt like they didn't really know how to teach like maybe they knew the the concept but they didn't know how to teach and I have a passion for teaching too so it, it was perfect like I was learning the the thing and then I was teaching it and by te you, this is the thing when you when you start teaching you learn from that too yeah 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 you know when I start teaching jewelry to other people and I learn from them like how their brain is working what they're comprehending what they need a lot of work and then when I saw uh, different people kind of works the same way I was like okay so what about me it's probably I for me it's about the same way too and then so internally I start paying attention to how I'm comprehending stuff too so I learn stuff from teaching also yeah, as yeah, well. yeah for sure um, Let's go to the next, which is ask yourself, are you willing to pay the price? 
everything has a price are you willing to pay you know like everything we're saying we're talking we're, we're explaining here me and Luis uh, how uh, uh, how to <clears throat> find out how smart you are it has a price to pay that means like you have to put more hours than your uh, your um, your competition and your what is the word like your your friends and whatever if you want to be smarter than them then you have to be willing to pay the price if those guys went to the park and playing basketball you're probably not gonna you probably not let yourself go there and play basketball with them you probably need to uh, ha uh like like uh put yourself on that chair whatever and then and then do more of what you do and then learn even more uh and uh that's how you become smarter that's how you're gonna you're gonna be uh smart and you're gonna know that you're smart they're gonna tell you that you're smart uh you are you willing to pay this price you know like are you willing not to go to fishing with your friends are you willing not to go to the desert to, to ride your uh you know um your your bike your, uh, all kinds of things you know are you willing to pay the price so whatever you like you probably have you want to um you know stay away from it and then stay and do some more of what you need to do and then learn a little bit more a little bit more and then pay the price and then eventually you're gonna be smarter and make more money and then or achieve more whatever that more is that you're striving for and so yeah you gotta ask yourself are you willing to pay the price yeah and i think um you know other than just paying the price for putting in the work which is um definitely gonna have to uh, sacrifice a few things here and there uh going to places doing certain things in order for you to advance and get better I think another price that you're going to have to pay is really the judgment and the criticism that might come your way for you, uh, especially in the beginning stages, because um, you, you're not really uh, sure what, what, what you're doing. And so you may be uh, putting stuff out there that's not that good and it's not of high quality or you're just not performing at, at, the, at the best levels possible. And so um, uh, this is this is a pretty, pretty high price to pay because you can just decide to just not do this and go and you know retreat and go and do something that's more comfortable that's easier that's not as uh, that nobody's going to judge you over there because maybe you're you're really good at that other thing and so you're like i'm just going to go do the thing that i'm good at because nobody can say anything because i'm i'm good right and so you have to be willing to to take that and so you know i remember taking it really with um <laughs> when i was uh working downstairs as a as a barista making coffee uh you know the f first year i mean i was um i jumped into that and for the most part it was just uh it was just complaints like it was bad like people would return the coffee they would give me like these really bad faces of like what is this this is really bad yeah. I, I would i would see customers go directly to to my boss and they were just like dude like why are you letting this guy make coffee uh this guy's bad or they just wouldn't pay for the coffee and then my boss would get mad at me he would you know tell me uh you know the things that i was doing wrong uh, there would be people who would literally like take a sip of the coffee just leave it on the table and just walk away because they just did not like it at all they would leave the the full uh, the full coffee there and it was just like uh it, it was it was a lot to take in and i was like it didn't feel good i was <laughs> yeah. i mean that was that was like my my image there on the line you know like people were not trusting me with the coffee i was making and but you know i knew that was the that was the price to pay and i kept at it i kept making it regardless of that even though it was painful i kept making and making it. and eventually you know i was able to flip that around and you know all of a sudden you know i was uh, getting praised and everything but then when the praise came when the compliments came it just didn't like i wasn't really affected by it anymore like i didn't really like like i wasn't like all like happy and everything because i knew that it, it took a lot of work i knew it was like it was it, it was the time and effort and the skill that i put in so you know i kind of like expected it. i was like you know i put in the hours this isn't just like me being lucky that oh you know i just yeah. luckily make good coffee like no like i went through that process of taking yeah. it and so it's important that you keep that in mind because you know judgment kills a lot of dreams like you know as soon as giving up to 
yeah yeah that too so there's a lot of a lot of prices to pay here for <laughs> to get good at whatever it is you're trying to get good at everything has a price are you willing to pay uh, the last question today we we did definitely one hour uh, we're trying to keep it 40 minutes round 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 there but definitely this was a very good topic and <laughs> i enjoy i'm still enjoying it uh, talking about it but this is the last question and we're going to close it with because this is develop your mindset podcast we're going to close it with develop your mindset on being smart for life um so um earlier you said sometimes it ends but <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'm thinking, uh, you know, uh, all the way to the end, you know, how yeah. smart uh, you you still want to be sound and become until you start losing your mind or something bad happens to you. But uh, but there is this thing where some people they want to become smart. They do a lot of uh, reading, a lot of watching stuff that makes them sound smart, but in all reality in their drifting in life they're not really putting in action putting in use whatever they're learning like you even said earlier you know um so uh, if um, it's very not easy to deal with these people i have people around me like that and i just like don't know how to come make sense to them come across like bro like dude like can't you start doing it and then start learning if actually in real life if this works or not you know you just sound amazing now but is it really amazing when you do it you know um so uh, those kind of people are drifting in life and drifting is uh, work of the devil it's like it's it's uh, like you're you're wasting your life or you're living life without full potential you know not not willing to pay the price so to speak and um, if that's what uh, is happening to you wake up like start putting uh, the action doing the action like putting time and um, and learn from it and then when you have success man that's the best thing ever you are gonna feel so good you're gonna feel alive and you're gonna feel human um, and yeah yeah you're gonna look smart definitely when you uh, do something and you succeed the other people want to uh, because everyone's pretty much trying to succeed in life too you know they're gonna they're gonna look at you and they're gonna be like that guy's smart you know he's he's actually succeeding what he's doing he's good at you mm -hmm. know so uh, don't drift in life yeah just just go at it and just take the chance you know learn to find out it's amazing life is beautiful <laughs> yeah. yeah so i want to say uh, two things here about developing your mindset on being smart for life so uh first of all um oh yeah so there's um I forgot exactly how this quote went, but it's, it's from Einstein, and I remember it has to do something with this, and I forgot exactly how it went, but it was something along the lines of like, you know, if you um, if you make a fish like uh, climb a tree, like if you're expecting something, it was something along yeah, those yeah. lines. Yeah, Give me a second. <laughs> how does that go? Um, but it was. Uh, if you judge the fish. Yeah, yeah. By uh, to climbing a tree. You know what I'm talking? Yeah. Yeah. Well. Uh, yeah. Well, the same, same time you have to ask your, the fish if uh, uh, they know that in, they're living in water. So. But yeah, I mean, like a uh, fish is a great, probably one of the best swimmers out there, and. Uh, but if you, yeah. But like, we don't know if fish but, knows that they live in water. But, <laughs> but like the, the the point of that quote is, is that, and I believe this strongly too, that everybody is smart. Every, uh, like everybody's smart, but you know, you you just have to find the the your thing. You just have to find the the thing that really um 
that you're that you're passionate for and at the same time you have some degree of talent and that you're willing to really work for that uh, in order to increase that talent and make it a skill and you know become a true master of it and so that's my thing i mean you as a viewer here i'm sure you're smart at something even though you may feel like uh like you're not and that could be just because uh you just haven't found something that really that you really love and that really connects with you and that you know that that, that you're to some degree just good at it. and so it's really important that you're out there and you're trying things and that you're experimenting left and right in order for you to find that one thing that that you're really good at and who knows you might find a few things that you are really good at and that you're passionate about but you got to pursue one and pursue it all the way and so by doing that you know you'll be able to achieve great things and so i know this because i went through this uh this is by self-experience i didn't really i didn't even know like i could be good at computers until like i i really went into college and i i was exposed to it and then i started to really work on it like seriously and That's so the key word, man, exposed and yourself. so yeah and so and, and before that you know i didn't think i was like smart and you know like really good at something until i did that and then i was like oh, okay you know like because at that point you know people were saying it to me i didn't even have to say it to myself people who were just telling me like you do you're like really smart you're really good at this you're a genius of like you know technology and stuff like that and i was just like <laughs> you know what's happening here because you know previously previous to that you know everybody would say that i was i was dumb that i didn't really know anything and stuff like that and so you have to find your thing and so and another thing, the second thing I wanted to say with, you know, intelligence and really being smart is that I like to be smart as f like almost like a, like, like, like a fighter, you know, like a, like somebody who's a really good fighter, a good skilled fighter, like a good skilled fighter doesn't have to be out there fighting the world. You know, they don't have to be like constantly beating up people in order to to know that they're a good fighter because they so. because they know that, you know, in the back they've put in the training they've put in the discipline and and i like to use the the, the fighting analogy because you know in order to become a good fighter it really takes a, a a lot of discipline a lot of hard work and it's it's like a craft that's really like it, it's really nice and so um yeah so so when you know that you're smart you know that you're smart you know you've put in the work you know you've put in the work and there's really nothing you don't have to go around saying that you're smart and everything like it you, shows, yeah you, it will show your results will show and once and when the time comes to perform you you'll know how smart you are awesome <clears throat> so definitely um, uh, become smart in what you do and uh, pay the price don't drift in life just go at it just fucking do it you know, you're gonna you're gonna get there, man. Like we all do, we all want to become better version of ourselves, and you know that's a mindset too. So um, self development is very very important. Develop your mindset on your skill set, on reading, on learning, on listening, and you know becoming the better version of you always is uh, the next thing you have to look for. And uh, yeah, don't worry about the rest. You know, people. Will mm -hmm like we said you know like people will tell you how smart you are you just do it you know don't worry about it and that's how it goes yeah and i mean i'm gonna close it by saying thank you guys and uh, you know this develop your mindset podcast i hope you guys enjoyed uh this one was interesting and beautiful and i enjoyed it man and uh yeah if you guys as, as you guys know this is jewelry company and you know we uh, we make beautiful jewelry visit our website we have a website it's kabarti.com we're gonna leave the link down below and uh tell us what you think and um yeah you can do your closing and yeah so um yeah it was a fantastic podcast and i mean last thing i'll say is that sure you know we were talking about like how to measure you know how smart you are and you know how how do um how do you know if you're smart or not and so um uh, I, well, what I'm going to say here is that don't focus too much on on trying to sound smart or trying to, you know, have other people see you smart. Uh, focus more on mastery, I would say, you know, focus on you actually learning something like becoming a master at something. Focus on actually getting the skills and becoming good at it, you know, focus on that, you know, because, because when you focus on that, that's when you'll actually 
put in the work, put in the hours, and ma the majority of the time, you know, like when you're actually grinding it and you're putting in the work, for the most part, there's usually not many people around you. Like you'll you'll be somewhere, you know, just uh, you know, just working at it, you know. Kind of like, you know, remember the story when you were saying you were developing your, your website, you know, like nobody was there like saying, go, 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 no. you know, you, no. were, you were there, you know, was putting in the hours doing that website and stuff. And like nobody was there, you know, like, oh, yeah, you got this. Come on, man. You're a smart guy. You know, you were like, you were just, uh, you were it's just a, doing that. It's a self-motivation. Yeah, you were just focused on um, becoming good at doing that website. And and that, that's what I would encourage you guys to do is to you know pursue that instead of trying to like be smart and and everything all this all this stuff you know because and you will become smart as a byproduct of of you actually pursuing mastery and becoming good at something so so yeah um uh, with that you should mention the book yeah oh yeah for for sure i mean <laughs> if you are interested in yeah really pursuing like a journey like this and you've found something that you really love to do and you want to become a master like i said pursue mastery you can always check out our book the 10 stages to skill mastery it was really uh based on Varus's life and how he became a a master jeweler and so in that book i pretty much break down the steps and so these are the steps that he personally used in order to become a master jeweler everything from uh you know starting right from the bottom from not knowing anything about jewelry to becoming a uh, master jeweler that he is today and so um, definitely it's a great book it's not just about jewelry you can apply this into pretty much uh any industry that you that you find yourself in you can pretty much just read the book learn the concept and uh, and you know tweak it to whatever it is that you're trying to master but definitely a great book it goes really into into detail as far as like what you can do and there's practical steps there it's not just uh it's not just theory it's not just uh you know we're not making stuff up here this is what he actually went through and we're explaining that detail about you know step by step and so you can you'll find the link below so you guys can download the pdf version if you want to read it or you, you know there's going to be a link down below as well so you guys can listen to it in the audiobook format they're both for free and yeah so and then there's more books so you guys can uh, definitely um, we're gonna put the links down below and all these books we have for you guys for free and then yeah for sure and there's gonna be uh, links to our social media so you guys can follow us there and uh, of course link to our website remember we're a jewelry company after all and so you guys can go in and check out our jewelry there if you want right to, yeah, yeah. Uh, i appreciate you guys uh, thank you uh, for staying this long and please comment we'd like to hear from you guys uh how do you um how do you uh like it and what do you guys want to hear next uh, we'll see uh, what we got through here in the company we, we can maybe like uh, come to some kind of uh new um uh, uh subject and we can talk about that uh as well and yeah I, we appreciate you guys thank you so much and we'll see you next week and yeah yeah see you next week thank, thank you very much thank you guys love you develop your mindset